G'day folks, my name's Paul Sol, and I'm a proud member of the BSSA, the Budget Regar Society of South Australia. You're at my home today, and I'm gonna show you my budgie setup. So, let's go have a look, shall we? I live on a hill, so not too big a hill. And a uh, bit of a garden area, cemented up there, goes up to the back, Avery's up in the back. And uh, some silver beet here that has certainly seen better days. Uh, got some good uses out of that. Uh, rung over 125 birds already this year, which is pretty good for me. And we'll plant some more soon again. Okay, let's go up to the back area. We've got three flights here with a, an adjoining aviary. And on the far left is another aviary over there, which... Uh, I call the last stock cage, that's for the old, older birds. I don't kill or put any birds down that are not a threat to the rest of the flock. You may hear some pigeons, as I've got uh, a few pigeons, as I've always liked pigeons from a young boy as well. Anyway, let's have a look in the aviary. Three flights. This over here. Ah, oh, nice, uh, real long, long perch here. Goes right to the ground, and uh, that's uh, made from an old cot. So if you've got a cot somewhere, an old cot, they're really good for perches. On the left-hand side, just there, the toilet roll holder. <laughs> um, on the right over here, on this bird is. Uh, What's that, Sue? Sue Adams, what is it? Yes, tell me it's for the tea towels. Yes, that's right. Um, down the bottom here is uh, uh, a clothes stand, which I've uh, made for a seed holder. Put a trailer with a seed. A uh, nice big seed feeder there as well. Yeah, mainly younger birds in here. That's where I put all the young birds. When they first come out from the breeding room, so they go into a nappy cage, then an inside flight, which is in the breeding room, and then they come out here. Um, on the floor here, I put the claw through. And the reason why I put that there is uh, just for night fright, and uh, so they don't get uh, hit the floor too hard, learning to fly and learning the ways of the new world for them, so to speak. Um, and it certainly helps them as far as not getting a ruptured air sac or anything like that. Yeah, let's have a look into the next Avery, shall we? Okay, another flight here. Have to be my favourite colour bird of this year. Thanks to Wayne, Reading Hopper. Beautiful bird, I think. A bit long in the secondary, but uh, yeah, he's quite fine. Really happy with that. Um, but uh, Bobby Bird, 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 uh, the walls are all flat metal sheeting, which is really easy on the eye and uh, really easy to clean. Really easy to clean, which is great. Uh, another perch there, which is from an old cot. So if you uh, <laughs> you can find the cot, you, especially the ones that are in the bare wood, much easier to clean down than the ones that are fully painted, let me tell you. Um, a seed feeder here on the side of the... Uh, Avery, uh, makes it easier for me so I don't have to bend down so far, a uh, bit of grip, uh, another one hanging down the bottom here, and we've got a tray there that holds all the seed, I put a bit of seed in there sometimes as well, for the ones that are a bit lazy, but uh, certainly try and keep the birds that are flying well of course. Uh, let's have a look over here, we've got uh, 
some grit, obviously, there's a little bit of shell grit in that grit. Uh, and also some nice cuttlefish bones for the birds, which as we all know is good for calcium. I really like these ovaries. They're, since I was a boy, I wanted something like this. I've had many ovaries. So probably my fourth breeding setup now, or fifth in my life. I, I guess this is probably my last one. <laughs> um, flight number two. Oh, let's go to the, the ceiling, shall we, the roof. So on top here, I've got galvanized iron, as you can see. But that galvo, normal galvanized iron is 1.4 millimeters wide. This is a 1.1 millimeter wide. So it doesn't uh, absorb as much heat, retain heat. Um, what I've done is uh, I've put uh, marine ply underneath that. And surprising, in those really hot days that does not get hot, it keeps warm. And what's uh, quite amazing, this gets really hot. This beam, this, this piece of metal, that will get hot itself and not that. Um, and on top of there, I've just put some clear. And on the top of the clear, which we saw earlier on, I think, um, is uh, another piece of galvo, uh, just to give it some shade. And I've, uh, I've actually screwed that straight through there. So from underneath, holding onto that, so the wind doesn't take it off the top. I had an experience where one of my protective seedings over the top landed in someone's uh, back garden some time ago. Um, this flight here is all cockbirds, um, all the birds that I haven't really used this year, most of them. Um, they're going through molt now again, as most people are probably experiencing. So I've still got a few birds down breeding, but not many. Uh, let's have a look. Another seed hopper there. Seed hopper, a feeder. One underneath again. Uh, we've got uh, some carrot and some cucumber. They really love that cucumber, let me tell you. Uh, something that uh, Ian McEwen got me onto, actually. God rest his soul. And... Uh, yeah, some grit, uh, iron bark, and uh, some cuttlefish bone, and just a few birds down there. All right, let's go into the next fly. Iodine blocks, which are really good, obviously. We'll put them anywhere, and they'll chew on those. We'll go into the next fly. So good so far. So far, so good, as they say. <laughs> All right, this is just hens in here. Most of these birds I have not used this year and probably will not use. There's probably one or two I might use. Um, again, we've got the bottle brush. Um, as you can see, it's pretty, it keeps pretty clean, these ovaries. They're, they're really good. I'm very happy with them. And uh, also, even down on the floors there, you sit down in the corners there and everything. There's uh, nowhere for any mice or anything to get into. Um, you see on the floor I put sand, uh, I use do this quite often, it's a good grip, it's natural, the birds like the sand, uh, what I do is I just buy play, sit, play pitch sand for kids, I know that's been cleaned, also I use beach sand but uh, to get that in bulk and nice and clean I'll, I'll just get it in, in a pack from Bunnings of course, <laughs> uh, another feeder there, We've got the water there, which I generally clean a few times a day. Make sure they've got fresh, clean water all the time. I really think that's, a, that's the biggest thing. A lot of people uh, keep their birds really well in so many other ways, but do not give them enough fresh, clean water. Uh, I think that uh, is uh, a beginning of many diseases and brings a lot of things on. Nice big iodine block there. Look at that one, it's huge. And, uh, yeah, we'll go out here, close this one here. So that's the uh, the flight and the four cages, and there's the, the play sand, courtesy of Bunnings. And as I mentioned before, I am facing east, so uh, it's good for the birds. They get that morning sun, and when it heats up, uh, it doesn't get too, too much more than that. Um, Go and have a look down this way here for a minute. Oh, just bang my head. So, uh, I'm 
And just go through here, close this one. What I'll do now, just quickly before we finish this piece here, I'll, I'll show you what I use for my uh, soft food mix. Very simple. It's just wheat and um, striped sunflower. Um, this has uh, been there since last night. I don't over soak it, as you can see. I just put a bit of water and then I mix it around. And I turn it probably, probably three times in the 24 hours. And uh, they are just starting to sprout. Now they will be sprouted probably in another hour or two. I can see a couple in there that are sprouting. There's one, you can see that. See, they're just starting to sprout now. It's another hour or so, perfect. And um, I don't have to drain any water out of that at all. It doesn't need to be rinsed because I just use, I use uh, box water out of the box, so uh, nice and clean. And as you can see there, there's no water on the bottom at all. So if you can get it down to making it so that consistency is perfect. So when it turns out there's no water left and it's sitting like that, that I find that pretty perfect. Yeah. And uh, have a break in a second. I just want to show you, that's an old tin shed that was there and I've cladded all of that. And that's part of my breeding room. So that's been insulated inside and out. And it goes right along over the top, some cages on the outside. And uh, we'll show you that in a minute. All right, okay, bye for now. Okay, now let's go and have a look at the breeding room. So as I said, that's like that. Up in the back, a bit of drainage there, taps going through, the breeding room. All right, so I started this uh, last year. Uh, the 1st of July, let's turn the radio down. So there's the radio, nice and high, no dust. As I was saying, I started this 1st of July last year, taking some time. The only thing I haven't done is the tiling. I did everything else myself. Um, how can we start? So we've got a mixture of wire cages and, and cabinets in here. Um, everything off the ground as much as possible. Some uh, ventilation in. There's a picture of a fellow. There's a nice fellow. Everything off the ground as much as possible, as I said. So for easy cleaning. Uh, storage, some storage there. Still some wiring done. Still, a, still things to be done. But we're getting there now. There's a few young in there. Um, I put a piece of cardboard on the bottom of each, each cage, which works really well. You can just change those and clean them out pretty easy. Notice there's only one perch in there, so there's not two, so they poop always there generally, except for I put a small piece of cardboard on the left. Um, let's have a look. Another cage here, some young in there. Dominant Pied, he's from the Fisher line. Uh, what else can I show you? I've got these here. These really work really well. So some of the old school people remember these. They're great uh, for catching moths and flies and uh, got a few of those hanging around. And uh, here's one I prepared earlier for you. And as you can see, <laughs> they work quite well indeed. Um, as I said earlier on, there's a fan up the back, up the top, up there, as you saw. Okay, and we go back around here and then we've got another one sucking out at the top up in here and then there's another one on the other side and I can have one or both going at the same time uh, this cage here is just a nappy cage uh, because the building is quite low and when I walk outside I can go outside and actually pull um, some a piece of water something over the top to stop that lighting coming through if it gets too hot 
Um, we'll go around. We've got a couple of bins here. One seed and one is for uh, mulch and um, wood chips for the birds. They're on rollers. So you can... Makes it easy for the move in and out. Um, a bit of carrot there and uh, soft foods will be coming in a moment as you saw them just a bit earlier on. There's some young in here. Move around again. There's uh, Originally I was going to have 46 cages, then it went to 43 and then I've decided 37 is a good number. So um, my full plan is now to go to 37 cages. So these cabinet cages on the, on here, you can see they're all apart as well. So there's gaps between everything so I can clean and as much airflow as possible. Uh, there's some young in there. See lace wings in there. His dad split lace wing. Double factor sky violet to a sky violet, so trying to just really get some depth and color in that bird. All right, so that's that around there. If you look around, look around. Um, I use this at night, so that's for a night light. Plus, it's a mosquito buzzer. I generally put it on the ground because it's pretty, uh, pretty bright. So I don't want to light the place up too much. Then we go further around the place. It's just stuff for keep my rings in there and. Torch in there, thanks to Ian Wise. Um, over here, this is rainwater. We've got access to rainwater. Little hidey hole in there. Goes around. A couple of show cages there. Uh, this moves around. It's just a workbench. Let's look at the other end. So, as we move around again, got a sink there. On Vanity, I should say, on the left-hand side. The plumbing will be done on Monday. A couple more days I have to wait. Unfortunately, you didn't get to see it, but that's cool. Um, there's six more cages up the back there. We've got a full small footstool down there and a bin. We've got air cons as well. So if it does get too hot, as long as it doesn't get any more than, say, 30 in here, it's generally all right. I've done it all in this, this uh, plastic roofing sheeting, which is easy to clean. It gets dusty as well. Obviously, you can't see the dust so much being white. Um, so that was a bit of a bit of a uh, hard one to do, but uh, got that through. Then we go into the flight. So we've got a flight here. Um, on the outside, I've used cage fronts, so I can put stuff inside now, waters, I'll put grit inside, grit there. Um, this cage here actually used just for a spare in case there may be a cock bird looking after its young and I may need uh, the breeding cage. So just to get things moving along a bit. Um, yeah, so let's have a look in here. So this is the flight I've got. So what I've done, I've put the wall on an angle. So this whole wall is on an angle that way, just a bit, about that much from the top. And what that does is stops all the poo going onto the wall. So this is the second season I've bred last year, earlier on this year, and just finishing off a season now in between. I've had a whole lot of birds in here. I have not cleaned the wall. And as you can see, it is quite clean. There's a few, few spots down here, and that's from uh, this perch here. And uh, as again, as I said before, when we were outside earlier on, um, using this core flu, which is great. So uh, bringing those uh, babies from the nappy cage into here, and when they hit that floor, they're not hitting the, the hard floor. You want them hitting something soft, and obviously they're not gonna hurt themselves so much. Um, you can see how I've done the perches here. So just a long line of uh, uh, perches on an angle there, so that gives them the feel of the show cage as well. 
helps them out a bit, I think. And it works really well. Right, in a second, let's close that off. Um, a couple of birds in there. Yeah. Uh, white cap up there, a couple of young up in here, I think. Yeah. They should be quite nice actually. Hello, hello, how you going? Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Alright. And uh, yeah, a few of those things, as I said, I only put these up there yesterday and they're starting to catch a few things already, so you can see they work. They work quite well and that's my green stuff everyone. A um, few more things to do. But, uh See you later. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.